hi everyone welcome back to my channel for today i've got the largest of the large stitched rectangles from lawn fawn a spellbinders halloween die from a couple years ago maybe um, and some very old movers and shakers from tim holtz <laughs> alterations as well as a cauldron biggs xl die and some tim holtz stencils i'm also going to use some grit paste and some vintage photo and pumice stone distress paint so it's a very distress tim holtz <laughs> kind of card um it's not actually a card that we're going to make today but it is an a2 size so it will fit the front of an a2 card or bigger um if one day i decide i want to send it out as a card i thought these would be kind of nice to do as sort of like mixed media collages sort of um yeah not collage in the true sense of the word, but collage as in what we're going to do today. <laughs> um, and very much mixed media for me. So to start with, I'm going to take some of the grit paste and the sort of, I think this is the bricked stencil from Tim Holtz. It's the large or the regular size stencil as opposed to the minis. And I have got some... I'm trying to think what paper that is. I think that is a watercolour paper paper and I want to say it's a, a WH Smith watercolour paper, which is a I think I've said this before, it's a stationer here where I live. So um yeah, and I love their paper actually, it's nice and thick and it, it does work really well. So all I'm doing is I'm adding some of the paint to uh, the grit paste just to get some nice texture um, some nice texture <laughs> it's already got texture to get some nice a bit of like a hint of color in the bricks um, and I'm going to do this somewhat randomly um, I struggle with a bit of random <laughs> but it works out all right and so I'm just literally splodging it on wherever I think I need to add some of the gritty bricks um, I did this once before, um, not with, not tinting the um, grit paste, but I used the grit paste on, um, oh, I could have done that in this as well, actually, um, in a, I think it was my Peter Rabbit inspired card, where I made a brick wall, uh, like for the garden, and I used the same stencil no, I might have used a different stencil, but a brick sort of stencil, and I used some grit paste, and then afterwards I used some distress crayons actually on that one. This one I'm just going to pop off to the side and let it dry um, as much as possible. I actually didn't have the patience to let it completely dry, so you'll see that later on. <laughs> so, um, I wanted. I'm just. I'm a bit behind. We had a busy weekend, so um, a lovely weekend, but a busy weekend, so. I've kind of I'm behind again <laughs> so um but I wanted to get something out for you guys and yeah this just kind of made sense for me at the time except it was probably the longest sort of video to do when I've not got the time to do it sort of thing so <laughs> anyway so what I'm doing now is I'm taking a, a spectrum noir uh clear sparkle pen um any of those sort of types of pens will will work for this you can even use some shimmer paint or something like that and this is the die from spellbinders um i cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head but if you need to know the name just pop me a question in the comments below and i will find out for you um but i, ca I cannot remember the name of it but basically there are pieces and you'll see this later on the there's two dies there's the corner and the little round one and you kind of interlink them so that they kind of overlap and create different size frames. It's, it's very clever, um, but they're all like little spider webs. So I thought it was cute. And then I have the bats and the spider from the Tim Holtz alterations, movers and shakers from a million years ago. <laughs> um, and I love these things. I only have literally a handful of these kinds of dies. I have, of course, the Halloween ones that I could get. Um, and I have maybe a, a couple of Christmas and Valentine's and a word. Um, but that's it. But I do use them all the time. So they're really handy little things to have. So I've also sparkled those up. In, they were all in just some black cardstock. 
that I had as like spare cardstock, if you know what I mean, like scrap cardstock. And then I have the um, some walnut stain distress inks that I'm going to add to the edges of things. I didn't bring that into the front end of the video just because I kind of rolled as I was doing this, like I say, I'm a little behind. So I just kind of made stuff up as I went. <laughs> and so this kind of evolved as we went, but it's Halloween, it's distressy. I love distress ink at Halloween, especially. So incorporating sort of tones of black, greys and browns for Halloween is, it just works. So the walnut stain on this lighter grey or this sort of chocolate grey cardstock makes a huge difference. Now I also have the skull. Again, he's a movers and shapers dude. And I'm going to use hickory smoke distress ink on him. Um, I was thinking black soot, but actually what I do in a second makes it look more like bone, if that makes sense. So I have the hickory smoke that I'm just kind of round the outside and sort of over his eyes and nose area. Um, and he's in white cardstock. And then I'm going to take the walnut stain again and grab that and go again round the edges and over the center and sort of mixing those two colors. And it, it works. It works really, really well to make him just look a bit, you know, more bone-like. <laughs> that made any sense. So then for my, um, I don't know what you call this. What would this be? I want to say steam. <laughs> it's not steam when it's in a cauldron, let's face it. Um, but you know what I mean? The stuff that's coming out, the fumes, that's a better word. These are in sort of a limey green cardstock. Now that's great, but I'm not making a very bright Halloween card. So I used some peel paint, uh, distress ink around the edges. I cut this out three times. There's only one, if you like, on the bigs die. Um, I cut it out three times and I was at this point thinking I would either layer them so they stack up. So it's one coming out of the cauldron, but stacked up so it's a bit of height. Uh, and then I kind of changed my mind. <laughs> so you'll see it's like a whole load of fumy stuff coming out of the cauldron. So this is where I was running out of patience and energy and everything else because not only have we had a busy weekend but i'm not being very well either so yeah uh so i was trying to see on the back of the packaging and i cannot remember what tim said about whether or not this was heat um not resistant but heat uh, safe if that makes sense like if you can heat it up with a heat tool to dry it and stuff like that so I wasn't sure, so I went kind of careful um, when I was heating this to try and dry it off. Um, and actually I watched a, a lady the night, the last night, obviously this is not the same day, um, where she was showing how to make a collage, like a proper collage or what I call a, you know, a, what, what is typically known as a collage, if I can get the words out. Um, and she actually used a hairdryer and I thought actually that probably makes more sense because there's less heat even though a hairdryer still gets hot but it's moving that air to try and dry it which is what hairdryers do. So I may actually nick my own hairdryer because <laughs> I don't actually do use that thing for what it's meant for and use it for my art stuff now. So anyway completely digressed there. So once I had sort of dried it off I then plonked it under <laughs> The words today plonked it under some acrylic blocks to try and weight it down a bit um, and then just to kind of flatten it a little bit more it was mostly dry like none of the paste was coming off or anything like that and then i took a more distress hickory smoke and this is the crackle i think that's what called the crackle uh stencil from tim holtz again from quite a long time ago but it's, um, it's another cool one to have in your stash if you do um, or if you want to get it because just a little sideline. None of the Stampers Anonymous product ever retires. So the stamps and the stencils will never retire. So that's, I love that because that means that some of the older stuff that I really adore, I can still get. So when I get there, of course. <laughs> so I use that just randomly again over the background, again over the, uh, to give it some extra texture dimension um, and interest in the background that's the key thing for me with backgrounds is that they've got lots of layers and just lots of different um, 
things to look at, if you like, in the background and interest in the background. So I decided to drag out something I haven't for a very long time <laughs> because I thought, one, I need to use the products I have because otherwise they just go to waste, right? That's Nobody wants that. And two, uh, because I thought this would probably be a nice one to use for this sort of Halloween-y style thing. So this is the Distress um, Collage Medium in Vintage. So it's got a hint. I mean, it looks very caramel. <laughs> Don't eat it. But it looks very caramel there. It, it's obviously not caramel. Um, but it is uh, a glue. If something says medium on it, then it is a, it's got some sort of gluing property to it from what I understand. So this one has, like I say, that this tint of, uh, like a caramel sort of color i think this is actually the vintage photo color if i'm not mistaken and so it gives it that vintagey look but it's it's an adhesive basically so you can get the collage medium in matte and you can also get it in a crackle um or crazing no crazing i think it's called anyway so what i was trying to show you there just so that you know what i'm doing <laughs> It, with these these dies these die pieces what they do is that what one on the end you can see those little sort of diamondy shapes um, on each end there's one that is solid and one that is open so <laughs> excuse the mess um, so one what you do is especially if you've got different color card stocks of these what you do is you tuck the solid one underneath the open one and it gives you another bit of texture or dimension or um, interest again on that though where they like join up um, I just think it's really clever and then also you can make this as big as, or as small as you want you know because you, you could have the little round ones in between each of the larger corner ones and make it a much bigger cart so I was chuffed when I worked out what you know how many I needed to make sort of an A2 sort of size um, front um, and it's Halloween, so I didn't line it up straight, and I thought, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> so, but the vintage, just so you know, the vintage Distress uh, Collage Medium will stay that colour. That's the whole point. It will it will give that vintage look to whatever it's on. So although it's an adhesive, when it does dry completely, it will still have that vintage look over the top of something. So if you've got lovely um, old-fashioned sort of, I don't know, papers and I mean how many of us have a ton of scrap of paper that we don't get around to using yes I am one of them um, but if you've got some that look kind of vintage esque you could use this over the top and make a little collage on the for the front of a card or a scrap of page or whatever you want and then this will give it that extra bit of vintage look rather than that sort of clean what I call clean crafting kind of look, if that makes sense. Um, so it's, it's a fun product to use. Um, in hindsight, how I did it <laughs> was beyond messy and I shan't be doing that again. I will just use a paintbrush, as you will see later on in the in the video with the other collage media, <laughs> which works out much better. Uh, I thought I was being a bit clever here, but you know, no, not really. So, uh, yeah, and also it's very, um, those, those spider webs are very detailed. So it take, you know, it was, I wasn't sure how I was going to get it on the back of it, to be honest, from, but I wanted to use that medium. So the other thing I could do actually in hindsight is actually decant some of that into a separate bottle. Um, and then that way I can use it kind of like a little squeezy bottle onto the back of the, the die cuts. So now that it's sort of dry, because again, no patience at this point, we all know this. Um, I took some of the Distress, uh, I think it's the Walnut Stain, and I just used that around the edges, again, just to get rid of that white line edge, because there's nothing that's going to be untouched on this thing <laughs> by the time I'm finished. And um, just that glue was everywhere, but I got, got rid of some more of it off my work surface. And then I will start to assemble, I think. Yes. Now, I need, I need some help. I, <laughs> I love this cauldron, but the little handle thing, 
I don't know where to put it. Like, seriously, I spent ages, you'll see in a second, and, I, and now I'm looking at it while I'm editing, I can see that the bit I sort of stuck it to is actually looks like it should be the part of the handles on the sides. Um, yeah, I just I just can't work out where to put it. <laughs> I don't suppose, in, you know, at the end of the day, I don't suppose it matters really, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. So this is where I've decided that my fumes coming out of my cauldron are going to be, um, you know, kind of like they are set up there. So I'm going to use the matte collage medium now. So again, medium means it's got some sort of glue pro property in it. Um, and I'm going to take a paintbrush this time, not a uh, spatula like I did in the other ones. Much easier. <laughs> so... so going to get some of this on and the thing I'm learning about collage in particular um, after watching a couple videos um, is that actually more is okay if you haven't got enough of your medium on there uh, especially if you want to go over the top it's just not going to stick properly and it might curl up and things like that I honestly didn't worry with this because this was, for one, was before I'd started watching some videos to know how to use this stuff properly. And two, well, I was just going with it at this point. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, this, my cat, bless him, he fell off. I've got like a cabinet next to where I make art. And uh, he fell off and one of my bottom drawers was open and he kind of hit the corner of it. So hence why there's a bit of a stopping, stop and start there. Um, I had to go and check he was okay. Um, he's fine, by the way. Anyway, so I tried to put my, uh, what's that thing called? Handle on the cauldron and then remembered I wanted my skull on there um, before, uh, sorry, underneath the handle, if that makes sense. So I just took it off kind of quickly and then I'm going to put my little skull on oh I just love him <laughs> so, so these are the sort of things this is what you know the, the kind of dies that even though like movers and shapers I don't even think you can get them anymore but there are things that I can keep using for year after year after year because of the type and the style and the the way that they are um, made to work it just it works so yeah I kind of put my handle I mean my yeah, my handle, not the side handle, this thing <laughs> over there. I have no idea if that's in the right place, but I just ran with it. So it's look, starting to come together. Um, and now's where I decided to add in my fumes. And again, just putting some of the adhesive on the back of the... Um, of the fume piece and then anywhere that it blotched out it will it will shrink back um that's the nice thing about this particular one it will actually shrink back if um you know you get a bit of goop that sort of oozes out but i, I still try and neaten it up i don't know i can't i have to learn to let go of stuff like that <laughs> so i'm just layering them at the base of them on top of each other so it looks like they're all coming out the same place you could actually have them next to each other like in like individually in a row if that makes sense and that would still look good because that's probably makes more sense actually because <laughs> steam or you know fumes don't come out in one little mess like this but it's art so it's okay right i hope <laughs> so anyway so i've got my fumes on it sounds so weird to say that out loud like that and now I just want to work out where I'm going to put my bats. Now I realise that it looks quite dark here. It's kind of hard to see these guys. So I will do something at the end, which again, I was rolling with it at this point, which is also a nice way to make your art. Um, you know, you don't, I know I have to plan a lot for the videos and things like that, but if you are just doing your thing at home, honestly, you don't, the, the more fluid you can be with it, the better you'll create so I think if we're too regimented in like we have to 
you know, do things in a certain way and we have to, um, you know, like I've planned it this way and that's how it's got to be. If you keep doing things like that, you'll never, well, not you'll never, but I would struggle to find that creativity properly. If that makes any sense. So just go with it. I think just go with the flow. So if like in this one near the end, I suddenly think, I need something else I need to add something else or I want to you know change something then that's what what you do because that's part of the creative process I think so just getting my bats on as well and because I shimmered them with the pen you can sort of see them there and the although it's a matte um, collage medium it does have a bit of a sheen if that makes sense like it's not it's not shiny by no means um, and it's definitely not glossy but there you can sort of tell so if you did go over the top of it it would sort of you would know that it was there like it would pick up on a little bit on the light but it's mostly um, yeah it's a matte so it's not um, not shiny and not uh, definitely not glossy at all so just get my spider on and this is where I've gone over top with little spindly legs it's quite good to be able to go straight over the top with something like a, a collage medium um, it just helps it stick much better and flat especially if that's what you want so again getting some cleaning up so this is basically it uh there's no words obviously because it's more of a collage rather than anything else but um this is also where i thought i needed something just to lift the bats and the spider because they get a bit lost i mean i love them but they get a bit lost in there so i dragged out some i was going to use glossy accents because that's more of a three-dimensional kind of um glossy stuff i don't know what the word is um but actually it's blocked again <laughs> okay i have issues with glossy accents oh, always so i will use my nouveau crystal glaze instead um, it's not as dimensional but it's still very glossy obviously in this instance it's still wet so i'll show you that i also dragged out my distress stickles in barn door for the red um and then the glossy i think it's called e ebony um, Nouveau glossy drops whatever they're called um, obviously this is still wet so if you want to see the finished dried um, collage then please check out my socials um, they're they're all linked below or you know just search for pixie land crafts and you'll find me um, and I use the red in the eyes of the skull and then i use the black glossy on the spider and if i haven't already said i use the nouveau crystal glaze on the bats which is why it's got a milky look to it at the moment but it will go super shiny it's nice i like it so that's it guys i hope you've enjoyed this um and i hope you take inspiration from it and you use that in your own crafty world till next time bye guys <laughs>